but still <laughs> it's got solid on-road performance Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's gonna to be reviewing a Land Rover Defender X, AKA the Bougie Defender. First and foremost though, a huge shout out, thank you to the Land Rover here in Lehigh, Utah, for giving me some time with this Defender X. I'm gonna include a link to their inventory in the description down below, so you can check out what they have currently. Something that's awesome about the Land Rover here in Lehigh, Utah, is they do not charge over MSRP for any of the new product with the Land Rover side of things, and also with the Jaguar side of things as well. So if you want a great deal on a new Land Rover or Jaguar, then the Land Rover in Lehigh is the place to go. If you have any questions, whatsoever just ask for Jordan and then on a side note if you can save time and money the next time purchase car link to my car buying guide in the description down below let's get into it So under the hood of the Defender X, we have a turbocharged inline six that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 395 horsepower and then 406 pound-feet of torque with fuel economy being high teens for the average between city and highway. Now let's go over the front end of the Defender X. So this is something that I've always been conflicted with when it comes to the Defender X. And that's the fact that the center of the hood's blacked out. And then you guys can see body painted here off to the side. It's cool with the two-tone look, but at the same time, I kind of prefer like a more monotone look on the Defender. Let me know which style you guys prefer more. Anyways, we have these signature little Defender accent pieces here on either side. This one actually has a clear bra on the whole front end, which, well, I shouldn't say the whole front end because it ends right here, but you guys get what I'm saying. Defender Fender logo right there. And then you guys can see the signature LED lights here with the fog lights down below. Parking sensors here on the front end. We've got the front camera as well. And then we also have the recovery hook here on the front end, as you can see. We do have underbody protection with the Defender X. This is supposed to be like your fully loaded off-roader Defender, basically. And so it comes, you know, standard with a lot of the cool off-road goodies, but there's the front end. Coming around the side here, our tire and wheel setup is 275, 45, 22 in the front and over in the rear as well. And you guys can see here with the wheel design, it's a five spoke design. And one of the spokes actually says Defender on it. And then notice we have Brembo brakes here with the Defender X and we've got the red brake caliper, which is definitely fun from a stylistic perspective. And that's one of the ways to tell it's a Defender X is if you have the red brake calipers. If it has a blue brake caliper for just the front brakes, then that means it's the V8. And then we have the air suspension as well. And then you guys can see here, we've got these itty bitty fender flares. We got a little splash guard and then Defender X there. Got the venting here on the side with the blacked out mirrors. And notice the whole roof also blacked out, which is pretty cool, and the pillars. And yeah, look at the stance on this thing, it's beefy. So here's our key fob with this Defender. We got the Land Rover logo there on the back. We have our unlock lock function. That's to turn the lights. And then this is just to unlock the rear. Now the reason it doesn't open up the rear is because this has a swing gate similar to the Mercedes G-Wagon. Notice it says Defender here, which is pretty cool. And you guys can actually see the recovery hooks. This is another thing that's cool about the X is that those are standard. Now we've got this for the air suspension to raise and lower it here on the rear to make it so it's easier to load things up. This does come with a built-in air compressor, another cool off-road feature. And I guess that's for the climate control here for the rear. And got this little baggie that comes with it as well. Um, other than that, I love the uh, windows here in the back and then also the skylights. Just gives it this cool kind of like open safari type feel. But there's the rear, when you're all done, just, well, swing it back. Now let's finish things up with the rest of the rear. So first off, we have the Defender's signature taillights here, which are definitely neat. And then we've got a full-size spare here on the back. Now you can get this with off-road tires. This one was optioned out with street tires, which will obviously help get better fuel economy. And then we do have parking sensors here. And then we got a receiver hitch, and then you guys can see with the exhaust tips poking out either side. Um, other than that though, I mean, it's a Defender, guys. Now, before we go over the door panel, I do want to mention this one has the ladder system, which is pretty cool. And then notice really nice leather trim here. And we still have like the utilitarian look with the exposed bolts, but then more leather trim down below. And look at the wood trim on this one. This is actually blind spot monitoring here on the door so that the passenger knows if someone's driving by. I love the look at the speakers here for the sound system. And then here are the seats. Um, so notice like the little kind of cloth inserts there, but then leather for the rest of the seat. And then there's more like cloth here on the side. And then popping in, ooh, there's your legroom. 
I got I got helmet hair from all the wind, and then here is the storage space. We do have the climate controls here for the rear. We got some USBs. We have our cup holder armrest situation, and well, let's head to the front. So here's our front door panel again. Really nice leather trim here at the top, and then more of those exposed bolts, which is fun. Blind spot monitoring here for the mirrors, and then you guys can see again with the leather trim down below. All of our window controls here, and then we do have memory seats, and then door lock and unlock, pretty normal. More speakers for the Meridian sound system. And then here's the front seat. So again, mostly leather. You do have some of the cloth though, like in the bottom portion of the seat, for example. Notice with the power adjustments right there. Pedal layout, pretty cool looking. Defender logo, and then more nice leather trim here, and then also on that part of the dash. Let's pop in. So here's the steering wheel with the Defender X. You guys can see the nice leather trim all around, and then you got the darker stitching around the center portion, and then the stitching all around the airbag cover with the Defender logo. Controls here for the center stack voice command controls. We do have our cruise control. It does have adaptive cruise control. And then we have our turn signal light stock, windshield wiper stock, and there you go. Here's our center gauge cluster screen. So first off, if I press the little button there on the left side of the steering wheel, it lets me scroll through some different menus, see different bits of info here on the Defender. Pretty standard stuff. I love how we've got the nav screen on the one side. And I will say, I do prefer the full digital gauge cluster to the uh, gauge cluster that's basically like uh, part digital, part analog. But anyways, there you go. So here's our infotainment screen. First off, if we pop it into reverse, we do have a backup camera with your directory lines. It turned with the steering wheel. The mirrors also tilt down, if you guys are wondering. Now, the reason I'm backing up slightly is to show you guys, it does the cool thing where it shows us underneath the vehicle with the camera view. I don't know. I think that's definitely like a, a neat feature, obviously, for off-road use. And then I probably shouldn't have put it into a park. But anyways, what I was trying to show you guys is we have more camera views. So notice that we've got the rear locker and the center locker with this. It's all automatic with the Defender. And then you have the tow mode as well. So cool that you have all the different camera viewpoints. And then it has the full 360 camera system where you can literally see out of like every single angle. And you've got this cool like exterior shot as well. So it's just a good system. Now, as for the rest of the infotainment screen, uh, response time is solid. You've got this main screen. It doesn't have the crazy click function that the new Landover product has, which is nice. And you can pop into different things like the seats. For example, you guys can see I've got the, or not the massaging, the air conditioned seat function on. I think it's funny that it always says seat heat, even though this is technically cooling me, but I guess it's a British thing. There's the infotainment screen. We've got the shifter for the 8-speed automatic transmission, and then we've got a bunch of controls here in this area. So we've got the volume control just off the side. That's your hill-to-sink control, auto-stop start, the air suspension controls to raise and lower the system, your low-range stability control, and then you guys can see some climate stuff all around. Now, this is a multi-function control, so press it in, and that lets me adjust the seat heat, I suppose. And then you guys can see if I press this, this will let me adjust the drive mode, and you can see the modes pop up here. So we have a comfort, eco, on the one side, and then, well, if the camera will focus. On the other side, we have got a grass, gravel, mud ruts, sand, rock crawl, wade, and then we have a configurable mode as well. So a bunch of different uh, drive modes that you can go between, which is great. And then we've got this button we can press to adjust the fan speed. Again, the camera's struggling today, but there's that little control stack. So as you guys can see, we've got some USBs and all that fun stuff there. And then we've got some really nice wood trim here. Cup holders. And this one has the refrigerator center console, wireless phone charging pad as well. And then really nice leather trim here at the top. Notice the Defender logo there. And then there's a quick look at the glove box. And then I love like the leather grab handle there at the top. And then this does have the camera mirror, just a nice bit of safety tech. And then we've got the controls for the center for right here. And then we do have a panoramic center here at the top. So here's our window sticker for this Defender. Now this is pre-owned with like 2000 miles. So this isn't current pricing, but anyways, you guys can see the standard equipment with this. And then the warranty information originally, four year, 50,000 mile new vehicle warranty. Notice the base MSRP, 87,900. And then all the other options. Total MSRP here, $100,905. Let's see how it drives. Let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood and hopefully you guys can now see the heads up display. Both the mirrors just do a blind spot monitoring. And then throughout the rest of the rear and 
and set off. So setting off here in the Defender. I still love that thing where you can see underneath the Defender with the camera. It's, it's just such a fun feature. But I've reviewed quite a few of these and well, I'll kind of give you guys my personal opinion on the Defender after we finish the driving with this. It's always such a fun experience to drive one of these because it it just has this like feel that you don't get in a lot of uh, unibody SUVs in today's world. It's still, you know, obviously it, it's a lot more comfortable than like a body on frame SUV with solid axles. Like drives like a full on luxury vehicle. But the big benefit with this is it still feels more like a body on frame vehicle in terms of like how big this is. And it's just, it's, it's hard to explain. You have to drive a Defender to really understand. You basically get the best of both worlds. You get the ride comfort of a unibody crossover SUV, whatever you want to call it. But then you also get, you know, the road presence and the driving feel of a, you know, big tank like body on frame SUV. But yeah, ride quality is super smooth. Uh, now, one thing I will say is if you want better ride quality, get the off-road tires. This is something that's pretty interesting <laughs> for me to like look at is there's a lot of people that like will get this with the bigger wheels, you know, the 20s, the 21s, 22s, whatever. Uh, but like, it's like, yeah, those might look cool, but like get the 19s and get the off-road tires and the ride quality will actually be even smoother. So like it's, it's definitely worth it. Um, air suspension's great. And let me see what actually, what drive mode we're in. Okay, we're just in the comfort program. Um, there isn't really like any other on-road drive modes other than comfort and eco. There isn't a dynamic or anything like that because again, the Defender ultimately is supposed to be, you know, an off-roader. It's not supposed to be an on-road performance vehicle, but still, <laughs> it's got solid on-road performance. I uh, think it's interesting is I just drove the new Range Rover Sport right before this and that actually feels like slightly quicker oddly enough uh, with the same powertrain um so yeah interesting thing for me to be able to see and this is definitely louder the Range Rover well that had a lot of like piped in audio this doesn't sound like it has piped in audio so maybe it does let me know if I'm wrong um, but definitely like that that sounded like more synthetic whereas this just sounds more like what an inline six basically should sound like. Now something to mention is you do get some wind noise on the uh, pillars here when you're at higher speeds with a Defender. That's not just a Defender thing, that's just a boxy SUV thing. I will say though, compared to a Ford Bronco and a Jeep Wrangler, it is so much less wind noise. Like it's, it's a lot, it's a lot more aerodynamic than both of those things. That is for sure. Um, other stuff here, it's, it's easy to drive. I love how easy this is to just go around. So comfortable. Get a little bit of turbo blow off. That's so funny. You get like a little bit of blow off. That's 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 a fun sound. Uh, steering's actually good too. Like this, you know, actually drives pretty well on road. Um, if you guys watch the channel, you know that I own a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392, and as much as I love that engine that's what you're paying for in that Wrangler because it does not handle well. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's it's an interesting experience. We're gonna get into this lane so we don't have to deal with any of that shenanigans. Um, but yeah, it's crazy like this. This has that same cool boxy look that you get with a Bronco on a Wrangler, but it's it, it's actually like luxury, uh, which is cool. We, and, and I mean, you know, the price point kind of, you know, you'd hope that. Anyways. Summing things up, here's my opinion on the Defender. If you have the money and you're okay with getting horrible gas mileage, the V8 Defender is an absolute blast. I would not buy that if you're planning on doing off-roading though because you have to have at least a 20 inch wheel on that. And that means you're not gonna have a whole lot of sidewall with the tires. So that means that not only ride quality will be bad, but also like you're, you have a really high chance of puncturing a tire. So not worth it if you're actually going to off-road um but it's a, it's a cool rig now with the uh, defender you know four cylinder versus six cylinder four cylinder really i feel like that's a budget car like if you just can't afford the six cylinder get the four cylinder but if you can't afford the six cylinder go for the six cylinder 100 percent. i think it's the best powertrain uh super reliable great gas mileage now in terms of packages I think the sweet spot is an X dynamic. I think this X package is cool with the interior. If you're gonna get all the interior upgrades, then yes, get the X. But I don't think that the 
you know, nicer interior and a lot of the upgrades this has are not really necessary. And so I would rather, if, if it were my money, I would rather save, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, get an X Dynamic, and then just load it up with the features that I want and still have a really nice vehicle. And again, let me, let me repeat that, save ten dollars to $20,000 over the X. So let me know what you guys think about the new Defender. Let me know what you think about the X. I think this is a cool rig, um, but I do think the Defender sweet spot is probably the X Dynamic with the inline six. That's gonna sum things up with our video on this new Defender. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the lander over here in Lehigh, Utah for giving me some time with this Defender. Check out the intro in the description down below. Ask for Jordan if you have any questions. I'll see ya.